You are about to embark on a journey into Schrodinger's Hat, a place where science facts coexists with science fiction, a place where everything you see and hear is simultaneously real and completely made up. So settle down, relax, and enjoy your time in the capable hands of the Free Radicals! service of Reading to you drivers <laughs> and also the walkers because we don't take a lot of money off you and um, we're dry and we have eating. Um, so I wrote some notes for my talk earlier on and my computer has neatly condensed them onto my phone and I do mean condensed, it is microscopic. So <laughs> bear with me. Um, as we know we're doing some, uh, have some building work going on in Reading at the moment. They are knocking down the car park in Garrett Street which is kind of them. Obviously we had a really nice bus station which was a little bit quality for and so there's a real opportunity to redevelop Reading and build some more luxury flats um, <laughs> and not give us a bus station. So um, I had a quick tot up earlier on from the good website of Reading Borough who are also our shareholder, stakeholder and arguably indirect my employer with whom I dissociate myself from anything I say this evening given my personal views. There are about 8,000 car parking spaces in Reading which professionally I'm disappointed to see. There's a car nut, it's handy. Um, of those, 900 are in Garrow Street car park, so about 10% of Reading's parking is about to get knocked down. Um, so I, again, put this time on Google Maps, I reckon we can get 140 spaces on Broad Street um, just by sticking cars all the way down the middle. Um, <laughs> about 25 in the marketplace, we get not replacing the 900 yet, so four regards, we get 500 cars in there, easy. Um, St Mary's Churchyard, just around the corner of St Mary's, but 250 cars where those gravestones are at the moment. Um, and then if we're running out, the Abbey Ruins, that can come down, there's another 100 spaces there comfortably. Um, I think that makes up the deficit for Garrett Street, or we could run a bus service, and everyone could travel in small boxes and drive up and down the arteries of Reading, um, 50, 60, 70 at a time, hopefully in comfort, hopefully affordably, um, and we can do some work on air quality and congestion. Um, but think about the number of spaces that I've, I've just described. Broad Street, um, Fort Regards, these are big open spaces, and that's the amount of our towns that we're giving up to car parking. Think about if we use that space for social engagement instead, and the sheer amount of our towns that we give away to parking our large expensive boxes which are becoming larger. The UK standard car park space that I learned today, 4.8 metres by 2.7 metres, um, you can't fit a Ford Mondeo in these days. You used to be able to when the Ford Mondeo was the size of a Ford Fiesta, um, but cars kind of grow. Um, and I'm as much of a problem with this as part of the solution because I'm a mechanical engineer, um, I like cars, I accidentally own four, <laughs> of which one is my wife's because the only thing you can put two, a two year old and a four year old into is a Range Rover um, but not a good Range Rover imagine like playing Russian roulette with £3,000 worth of air suspension and electric sensors that all go wrong all the time that's hers, it's been as much as 24 hours since she rang me up and told me there was a new light on the dashboard um, and outside of that I enjoy ridiculous British cars but I can do that because I can catch a bus, and actually, when one day the Lotus or the Land Rover doesn't start, it doesn't matter, because I just swear at it, kick it, and then go and walk to the bus stop, and I catch the bus into work. <coughs> and actually, 
particularly from your land rovers, that's more than half the year when it's currently awaiting parts or needs attention or it's cold outside, I don't like changing his automatic fold gaskets. I'll just go and get on the bus for a week or two weeks or a month or it's now been two and a half months since I've driven it. Um, but when it works, it's glorious and, and that's, that's enjoyable. Um, so that, that gives me my freedom, that gives me my ability to chop and change based on the fact that I'll come out tonight, have a drink and then catch the bus home, or I'll come out tonight in the car and then I won't drink, and it gives me the, the, the freedom of choice. On the other hand, it constrains my life, the bus back to where I live is only every hour, and that changes the way you live your life, but certainly on the days I drive to work, I can get through the day on a thousand steps, as my dear phone will tell me. Um, on the days I catch the bus to work, regularly I'll get 10,000 steps because it just gets you more active, it gets you out about moving and then you walk past Greg's and think I could do a pasty and I can justify it <laughs> because I've done my steps. Um, so are we going to see that idea of personal space of I want my car, I like my sound system and my air conditioning, or are we going to get the same kind of flight chain that um, we're starting to see as an important environmental movement with drove into Reading. Not only are you, you know, being very selfish and taking up, you know, six metres of road space all on your own, and that's not acceptable anymore in the same way that drink driving was fine in the 70s and we don't do it now, do we? <laughs> um, that same sense of sort of social shame will stop being, uh, it starts to be, yeah, I put buses, it's brilliant, I really enjoy having a bus every seven minutes, a bus every 15 minutes. I like the freedom it gives me, and I don't mean to that I have to necessarily go back to my house. I had a great night, met a lovely girl, I just went to her house on the bus. If my wife is watching any recordings, then <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the last bus home. <laughs> well, it doesn't take long. Um, what else have I got to say? Um, in terms of air quality as well, um, environmental issues are becoming a bigger and bigger part. Um, the Euro 6 buses, the buses are by now and by Christmas-ish, depending on when our contractor necessarily achieves what they're contractually bound to do. Um, by Christmas all of our buses will be Euro 6, which means the tailpipe emissions of each bus will be better than the tailpipe emissions of a brand new car, by a roughly 4 to 1 ratio. Not like per passenger or some magical mathematics about, look, I've got 100 people so it doesn't matter anymore. Um, because the bus is a big thing with a big heavy hot engine in it, We've got room for big catalysts and lots of surface area to do lots of clever stuff with the gas. So what's coming out is genuinely actually clean. Um, and we are now able to fulfil the idea that it's better going out than it is going in for bits of certainly Reading and, and definitely over in London. Um, buses are very, very, very clean these days. Divided by 100 people and the answer is basically nothing. Which begs the question whether it's worth having a kind of 20 to 1 ratio of cost to go up to an electric bus. Um, where genuinely at zero if you ignore tyres, brakes and train dust, mm -hmm. suspension um, and the people who are on it. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can get to sort of a genuine, as near to zero as we can get. But actually we're going from sort of there at Euro 4 to there at Euro 5 to there at Euro 6 and down to nothing for electric buses. But that, that last step costs us 10, 20 times as much. Um, what I also want to do is share some of the unique entertainment of being a manager in a bus company uh, with you as well. So um, today we had a vehicle um, which was providing good quality bus journeys with about 40 people on board and the vehicle enjoyed a puncture. Now, it happens, it happens to anyone with 300 vehicles running around with multiply that by six is the number of tyres, we're going to get punctured at some point. Of course, this one happened on the slip road of the M4 at Junction 5. <laughs> <laughs> and the driver thought, the steering feels heavy. What I'll do is continue my journey down the slip road and join lane one, and then decide that I have a puncture and can't drive the bus anymore. And so the driver blocked lane one, and don't worry, they're building a smart motorway, so of course nothing happened. Um, <laughs> and somehow, despite eating pasties, sending text messages, and, and trying to perform sex acts on themselves or each other, nobody drove into the back of the bus <laughs> during its time in lane one, and our supervisor, um, sent me a message saying, bus is stranded, I hope you don't mind, we're not going to it, we've just called recovery. I said, that's fine, I'm, I, there are not enough beacons in the world when you're on a motorway. Um, if you're ever driving on a motorway, I recommend you get on a bus first. If you're ever driving on a motorway and your car breaks down, pull over as fast to the left as you can, then move another six feet to the left, drive up the bus, 
damage your car, get as far from the road as possible, then get out of your car, climb the embankment, and get as far from it as humanly possible. The, re the expected lifespan of a van in the hard shoulder, in the cent centralised in the hard shoulder, with markings and beacons on the back of it, the expected lifespan is 20 minutes. If you do not have chevrons and beacons on the back of your car, go away from it. Go away from all the people who are sending text messages and performing sex acts on themselves. It's a terrifying place on the motorway because everyone believes they're not going to crash. And that means that we all know a two second gap to the car in front, but ideally a four second gap is what the kind of spe spectacle people of the Institute of Motorists say. Nobody does that. Um, and when you go measure your own gap, pick a random moment on the motorway, measure your own gap to the car in front, it's going to be a second and a half or two seconds at most, probably a second. Um, and that's not far enough that when he breaks and you break and they break and they break and then they break and then they run into each other. Introduce a stationary double deck bus into this mix, it all gets much worse much more quickly. So we had to evacuate 40 people across the hard shoulder and up onto the embankment. And then, and this is the tricky bit, corral them into a small space with one driver waving his arms and saying, stop walking down the motorway. Oh, but I only want to go up the slip road to Slough. No, stay there. We're going to sort you all out later and we have to turn up with another bus. Um, I will read to you the email I have um, subsequent to that. Uh, incident with bus 758 part two, says our lead driver. Um, so we parked the bus at Slough bus station where it eventually got recovered to. We parked it a little bit away from the wall in order that we could then jack it up and change the tyre. <sighs> Whilst being parked up by the recovery truck at Slough, beacons, lights, bus 758 come under attack from a reversing first bus. <laughs> <laughs> 758 suffered some light damage to its near side rear and two broken windows. <laughs> So we parked a little bit further over than they were expecting, with beacons and chevrons and lights and excitement. Um, uh, our manager replies, ouch, thanks for the information, clearly bus 758 not having a good day. Um, I assume the driver of the first bus was to blame for the damage. And I have a three word response from our slower driver and it's, I genuinely believe our female drivers are amongst the best of our drivers, but uh, his, his answer is rather damning. <laughs> yes, she was. <coughs> I don't think we needed that additional detail, but this sort of happens in email to me, and that incident has now cost us 350 quid to tow the bus off the hard shoulder, a grand for a tyre, and probably another 60 or 70 quid to get it fitted. Um, that money, and of the two and a half, three million pounds a year we spend on, on engineering um, in a year plus labour. Um, that money comes directly from the pound clients that get paid over the cab door. So today, probably with that incident, we've not made any money. And that's disappointing because you don't need very many of those days in a week before you don't make money in a week. Um, and somebody falls over and um, claims compensation and suddenly we're into a, a 10,000 pound claim. We have, we're insured, so we, we will pay up the excess is 10k, up to the first 10k we pay. Um, it's not hard to make a loss running buses, it really, really isn't. Um, and so we make margins of one, two, three percent on 30 million pounds a year. If you were trying to look for a business to invest in, you just put your money in the bank, it's not worth burning the diesel. Um, but I go to work and, and a lot of my colleagues go to work because we believe what we're doing is good for Reading. Um, it's good for the town, it's good for moving people around, and it, it creates social mobility for people who, some people wouldn't leave the house if they didn't have a bus service. If they're, if they're old, um, if they're immobile, if they're broadly homebound, um, this is actually a chance for social interaction. The bus driver might be the only person they speak to in a day. And that's, that's massively important for more than just solving congestion and air quality. It doesn't matter how much pollution the bus puts out if it stops stop somebody from suffering with a genuine mental illness of loneliness. That's why I go to work and that's, that's why I do what I do. Um, but there are occasional comedy moments such as you'll never guess what we've done now. And <coughs> yes, there are, there are now fewer and fewer things I won't believe we haven't achieved as an organisation. <laughs> um, some of which is, is entertaining, we'll go to the pub and laugh about it, and some stuff you just put your head in your hands, but it's good fun and somehow it pays all our wages as well. 
Um, that's all I have to say. Uh, sorry, guys, I saw you had to work. <coughs> um, you can see me in the bar afterwards and tell me your last bad news story about the bus if it's more than about six weeks ago. I'm having a good time. Um, thank you very much. I will uh, try to get out your way and sit down. Thank you. <laughs> You'll never guess what I've just done. Well, what will you do now? I've knocked down the whole of a car park. Great. <laughs> 900 spaces. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do now? We're going to pay for Brie Gardens. Uh -huh. We're going to pave again Broad Street. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's knock down Palmer Park. Uh, and then we can build more multi-storey car parks because if you build car parks on top of each other, you can fit more space in uh, on the ground. Yes, yeah. that works. Yes. But I think there's going to be an issue. I think we need to make spaces wider. Yeah. 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 Y
What are you bringing? I thought the Land Rover. Oh! Yeah. Going sneaky, going, going in between them. Yeah. But yeah. I see a Land Rover going. No, no, no. No, and this still counts as a bus. <laughs> That's very true. I can get the land speed record. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna take seven passengers with me. All oh, right. Are you running it on Kalpu as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I'd have collateral. Collateral. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can't touch me if I've got people on board. It doesn't work like that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. no. No, because you know. Ariva don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you um, drive here or? Uh... No, um, I got the bus. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. So does the bus stop right outside your house? No. No. Um, <laughs> well, it actually stops outside mine. So uh, maybe. Want to come back to mine? I, I, um, let me just see what the wife's doing. You'll never guess what I just done. Go on. Just created spaces for social engagement in Reading. <gasps> Did you buy? Build, do you build some fa fancy flats? Oh no, no. I spent ten years deciding how to knock down Station Hill. <laughs> then that company dropped out, so I picked oh, another company <laughs> to knock down Station Hill, and they took their sweet time about it. And you know what? They dropped out as well. So now the third one. This is going to work. Maybe. Okay. Station Hill. Station Hill. We With, without a station. That's the joke, you see. It's still called Station Hill, but there's no station. And it's going to become a social engagement space. Yes, it's got an amphitheater and everything. Ooh. Can we have, like, maybe some tents with some... No, you can't have tents. What is this? A festival? <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, this social engagement space, does it have any trees? Nah, nah. It's just... Lots of beds. Wow. <laughs> You've been waiting for the bus too? Yeah. So, um, this is a Station Hill stop, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you know when one's coming? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to tell you? That'd be great, actually, if you could. Cool, just tap it. Delayed. 17 minutes. 19 minutes. <laughs> Next month. <laughs> well, I guess we could just chat while um, waiting. You know, make it like a social event. Yeah, you have nice hair. Oh, thank I just have hair like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to it? Fell off. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yes, Jeffrey? My wife's picking me up in five minutes. Oh, you want to hurry up? Um. Alright, fine, we'll get on. <laughs> 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 Pop quiz, hot chap! Such a bullet, what am I doing? <laughs> if we go below 50 miles an hour, the bomb will explode. <laughs> not the idea, not the idea! No! <laughs> not Junction 11! No! <laughs> Do you fancy some bricks? Well, I actually got in the car today, so I don't really deserve it. Oh. <laughs> I thought we agreed to walk this morning! Yeah, um, but like, I'm not hungry, so um, it's okay. I'm, a I'm actually on a diet, and um, 
So I tell myself that if I drive, I can't eat the food. Um, and it's working out great. Okay. Just, I can't go to Greg's alone. I mean, they're just gonna, they're just gonna look at that fat bastard and go, Oi, why are you getting a Greg's? <laughs> but then you'll be next in line and uh, you don't have to talk to him. But, it's not fun to go to Greg's alone. Um, I'm not pressuring you. I'll do it. I know. I respect you and, you know, your diet, mm -hmm. so I guess I'll... You could always, um, if you're lonely, ask the bus driver if he wants to join you. <coughs> okay, Terry? How you doing? Well, I didn't crash today, so... That's good, that's good. Well, welcome to HR. Do I get a pay rise? Ah, well about that. I've uh, been checking the, uh, this email you sent. It's, it's not exactly the right way to say say that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't call a she a she anymore. Oh. <laughs> no. You've got to use the pluralized. They don't know it's a she. So there. She's. No, no, that's still a she. <laughs> no, don't no, no, just say they. They crashed it, not she crashed it. Okay, they crashed it. They crashed it. They with the long hair. And no, the no, hair. no, no, no. <laughs> Just they, nothing that can distinguish who they are. GDPR says nothing that can have no name, no references, no no photos either. Oh, okay. Especially that one. <laughs> that was the wrong photo. That one. That's, that's actually my cousin. Ah. Well, long story short, we'll do some HR training. Okay, say I bump into you. What are you going to say? If I was a woman or a man, anything. If I, any person. God, my training is so poor. <laughs> Sorry, I bought uh, you the shovel as well. Ah, oh, ah, oh, God. Hey, they, what are you doing reversing it to me, they? Yeah, oh, I'm such a they. Yeah. Uh, idiot, you No, no, idiot can be slightly construed. Yeah, you've got to say you, um, you, uh, person who's not as intelligent, but so, but basically, just don't say anything. <laughs> just go, oh no. You, oh no. E there we go. E equal person. Yeah, equal person, that works, <laughs> equal, yeah. <laughs> equal person. Uh, oh, what were you doing? <laughs> Hello, Terry. Hi, Terry. How did you come here, Bubba? Uh, I did actually. Sit down! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, I walked. <laughs> Sit down! Uh, I drank if that helps. No, but I like the power. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you call this? Uh, nine. You're late. I know. Twelve hours late to be precise. <laughs> <coughs> I thought I'd be, you know, Early for the next bit, technically. So, you know, this bus. Mmm, Bertie. It's the new one. It's the Eco 6. Ah, Bertie, the Eco 6. And it's now 12 hours late on its route. Well, or 12 hours late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of people now who would love to ride the Eco 6. Ah, she is a beauty. Whoa, what are you doing? Why are you stroking my Eco 6? Can't I stroke your Eco 6? Are you going to defend the honor of your Eco 6? Yes! I will! Alright then! Okay! If that's your job! But defending my right my Eco 6? Yes! That's the driver. Okay, well, I won't drive it, I'll just defend it. Oh. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Does she make you. Does she ma I know it's Bertie, but does she make you up unhappy? <laughs> she makes me very happy. Good. Yes. Does she make you happy? No. Oh. She's a horrible wife. <laughs> She's always looking at me. But it's your job. Oh, that's what marriage is for you. Job, is it? Well, you know.
How long we got to stay up here for? They locked the doors of the deep bell in. And now we're stuck until the morning. Not even that bad a crash. <laughs> it's always bad. Right. I think we should eat somewhere. <laughs> it's been it's been twenty minutes. Um, um, me first. Okay. Who can eat first? No, eat me first. Really? Yeah, okay. I've, I've always been into that. All right. <laughs> um, um, where, where should we start? Are we going to cook you? Well, I think or... we should cook them first. No, 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 we're not allowed to open flames on buses. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I need to charge the phone up first, don't I? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't plug it into that. Would you trust a USB port on a USB port? <laughs> you might get like a disease, a uh, computer virus. We're going to eat you. Yes. That's the least of my worries right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, um... Look, I'm vegan, <laughs> so it doesn't count if you're human. This right. makes sense. So I hear that passengers are eating each other on bus 365? Yeah. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to say it was my fault, because it wasn't, uh, but I might have locked them in. All right, and that wasn't your fault? No. It was for their own good, right? It was for their own good. Absolutely, yeah. good. Let's We're see. trying to down the population of Reading. Okay. So if we get rid of around 40, then... Well, if we get rid of another, <coughs> say, uh, 5,000 or so, then we won't need a car park. 5,000? <laughs> well, How many people would think drive cars? You know, we've got 900 spaces that we're getting rid of, and each car can take about five people. So, you know, about 5,000, and, you know, we're good! Sure, okay, fine, fuck it, let's do it. Um, <laughs> why not? Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to so, murder 5,000 people. So, uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Alright, um, looks like uh, we're trapped on another bus. I know. He looks quite tasty. Okay, um, um, what about the driver? Too lanky, look at it. Mm. Yeah, anyway, um... It's going wrong! <coughs> They're having sex on the bus now! Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> They're having sex on the bus, the population is going up! Ah, yeah, I thought this might happen, okay. Basically, we're gonna have to neuter them. New to them as they get on the bus. Sure, why not? <laughs> why we're killing five, them, five grand of them, let's, let's just sue near them. Do you have the engineering to do that? Of course I do, it's just a pair of scissors, isn't it? I've done it to my job once. <laughs> oh, oh, is that what the budget's for? Budget, yes, yeah, scissor okay. budget. Okay, great. Scissor and neutering training. <laughs> That's what every engineering department needs. L and D. I'm afraid for them to shut the doors again. Oh, not again. <laughs> ding, 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 politics on buses, power crazed presenters, Bertie the Eco Six, population control policies, and bus survivor cannibalism. What do we need to see more of? What do we need to see less of? Any votes? Any other suggestions? Oh no, I'm just... Bullshit. Less of me. I'll get off. You guys carry on. Oh, look at the margins on that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Brower County. Oh, <laughs> give me a fist. <laughs> Time to learn some double entry. Yeah, double entry. We'll pull out the ledger. Yeah, pull out your ledger. Boom, yeah. Flop it open. Flop it open like a seagull. Yeah, 
flick past to today's press? Flick past uh, today. Now, where's your pen? My pen is here, it's Paul. Paul, you... Oh. That's a big pen. Yeah, it is. I got it at one of those novelty stores. For a giant pen. Good. How much did it cost you? It didn't. Oh, that's good. I was going to mark it down as an expense. Ha! 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 I stole it. <laughs> good. Ah, oh, great. Cool. Yeah. So, how much did the damage cost today? Uh, three and a half thousand. What? Pounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how much have we made today? Um, three and a half thousand. <coughs> Pence. <laughs> Welcome to the Hungry Games. I'm your bus driver. The door is now closed. <laughs> oh. 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 Before the Hunger Games, <laughs> I was there for the first one. I offered myself up as tribute. Did you? Yeah. That's why I have this arm behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> it's to hide the hideous scarring. Oh my god. Yeah, I've got freckles. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get those? Near enough, birth. They tried to bite me, you see. They tried to eat. But I had a trick on my sleeve. An ace? No, my arm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Tested chocolate. And because they were on diets, and on the buses, <laughs> they were watching their steps. So they couldn't eat chocolate, so they moved on. Yes. I like to look up the sky instead of my steps. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely day. <sighs> it's such a lovely place to be. <laughs> oh, love a bit of Reading Town. <laughs> oh, God! Oh. Oh, welcome to the Purple Turtle. How can I help you this morning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can I have... Um, <laughs> oh, go on then. No, just... I can't believe it. I'll have a pint, please. Okay. Uh, have you seen what's on the TV? Oh my god. Oh god, it's you. <laughs> You're famous around the world now. You've really put Reading on the map. Have a pint on me, son. Oh, thanks. It's only like 11 in the morning, but fine. <laughs> and uh, I had it poured from last night. <laughs> ah, fuck it, why not? <laughs> Good old Gun Street. It's microscopic. <laughs> this is the new bus that was supposed to fit into. Now that's a picture of the bus. <laughs> is it to scale? Can I see a bigger version of this bus? It's right in front of you. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So, the new Hunger Games bus then, what's the features? It's got a trap door. <laughs> Hangman. <laughs> Your special feature. Meat grinder. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> I approve. Okay. So. Yeah. You were given a pipe. Yeah. At 11 a.m. Mm. Then thought, time to go to work. Yeah. And drive the bus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the insurance is there. Uh, Good. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> we can't actually help you pay for it. But you pay for it. Yeah. For the pint. <laughs> no. The bus. Oh, I don't want the bus. It's fine. 
Oh! Oh, you mean the horrific amount of damage yeah. I yeah. caused? Yeah. Oh. That was actually our new model. It was the Hunger Games. And there was supposed to be one victor, but uh, thanks to you, they kind of all died. <laughs> or. The victor. <laughs> oh. Yeah. They yeah. are that. Unscarred, but managed to murder everyone. <laughs> you never really thought of the driver as um Secret weapon. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Like the ace. You know, like, I don't know. So what happened to the trapdoor? Oh, sorry. Oh, um, I, I might put something in it. Like a sheep. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, um, I found it. It was um, in the in the trapdoor. Okay. Our passengers leave the strangest things in there. Uh, do you want to put with the others? Oh, yes. And the cow. And the cow. Yeah. Um, come on, um, sweetie. I know you have to talk to care about them, she. Um, yeah. 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 To you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. So um. Gerald, can I get the competitive analysis of Hunger Games uh, against a Reaver's Running Man trust list? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just come in. Yep. It is here. Oh, they've renamed Buzz Buzzsaw. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we've done a poll. No one's really happy with that name. They want yeah, to change it. Bit weak. Yeah. Bit yeah. weak. Yeah. What do they want to change it to? Um, happy, happy clown. <laughs> happy, happy clown. Yep. Yep. Was this an internet poll? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did we intentionally exclude Bussy McBussy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that, we didn't... Okay. What were the runner-up names? Jason. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Name to the buses, not the entrance. Oh! Sorry. Jason? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a problem. Um, the Hunger Game buses actually cause more people to be buried in cemeteries, and that means we can't use it for car parking. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So basically, we need to kill more people. That's what you're saying, really. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the next plan? Um, Hunger Games planes? It's quite a lot of us in Reading, I've heard. Uh, yeah, Hunger yeah. Games planes. Yeah. Or, or we could just mm -hmm. have a free bus service for the, all the over 65s and then put them all on there and then bust them off somewhere. Swell! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <coughs> Yes. And then um, conveniently break down on the way to Slough, and then have the bus driver just gather them into one clump. In the woods. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then release a wolf. <laughs> or just let them try and find their way back. <laughs> the Wonder Games. Yes. <laughs> I think this should be set in motion right now. Get the free bus passes ready. I'm going to Slough. You stay there, stay there, Jim. and hold this big chunk of meat. <laughs> Ooh, meat, meat. You two get in there as well. Hello, stay girl. close, stay close. Someone will be long to look after you soon. I'm so excited All for right. this trip. I've missed human contact, it's been a while. Release the wolves! <laughs>